Hi everyone, I'm so glad to be with you again. May you be surrounded by God's love, joy, and peace as you go about your day. Rest assured, He is going to be with us. That's why we always have a reason to thank Him. In Psalm 92, it says here, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work, and by that the works of your hands I sing for joy. Let us give thanks and sing to the Lord today. All creation speaks your glory. Angels declare you worthy. You spoke a word and created the earth. The stars are wrapped in praise. The stars are wrapped in praise. We send in all of you. We send in all of you. Here in your presence, we send. Let us pray. 
Thank you, Lord, for saving us. We know that regardless of whatever it is that we're going through, we always have a reason to thank you because you're at work. Lord, we declare of your steadfast love upon our lives today. I pray that it will affect our decisions, our relationships, and our worship to you today, and it may affect, and I pray that it will affect our church. So I pray that our hearts and minds will be aligned to your will today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text for today is found in Acts chapter 9, but let me read the last part of our text for today, which is in verse 31, a description of what has been happening in the church back then. In verse 31, it says here, So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. When you hear of the word church, what comes to mind? Maybe you're thinking about Jesus being the head, the preaching of the word, a place where we get to be able to sing songs together, uh, maybe the building where we get to hold them. While all of this is kind of true, part of church really is being able to experience peace, walking in the fear of the Lord, being built up, and multiplying. And that happens when we do have relationships that honor God. This is very much a part of the church, relationships that honor God. And how does this happen? Particularly in Acts chapter 9, what we could see here is that if you start with the beginning of the chapter, what we could see here is the conversion of Saul. Now, many of you may know that Saul was an avid uh, persecutor of the church. He has harmed Christians during his days. Now, at some point, the Lord met him, a bright light shone, and then he got converted to Christianity. Now, after he got converted to Christianity, in a few days later after he got converted, he started proclaiming Jesus. He started to preach about the person whom he encountered. He started to speak about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the religious leaders and other leaders there did not like it. Why? Because he's kind of like the best poster boy when it comes to being converted to Christianity, that him being converted would be something that would not speak well of the other camp. So that's why they tried to kill him. And Paul, sorry, Saul, back then, before he became Paul, knew of this plot to, for him to be executed. So what he did was he escaped from Damascus, where he was preaching the gospel, and then Saul eventually went to Jerusalem. And this is where we pick up the story from, Saul being in Jerusalem. Let me start reading from verse 26 once again. So after he came to Jerusalem, this is what happened. Verse 26, And when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were afraid of him. For they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them on how on the road he had seen the Lord, who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord, and he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists. But they were seeking to kill him. Again, it happened. In verse 30, And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Verse 31, the one that we read earlier. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. What was happening here? When we talk about relationships that honor God within the church, what we could see here, first and foremost, in verse 26 was this. When he had come, when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, but the disciples were afraid of him. Now, this situation is very understandable. Saul has a track record of harming Christians. It's like saying that the one who has harmed fellow Christians whom you may know or whom you may be related to, all of a sudden wanted to become like one of you. But what Saul did was very impressive. Through the empowering of the Holy Spirit, through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, what did he do? He attempted to join. So that's our first point, attempt to join. For all of us today, don't just attend church. My prayer is that you would attempt to join. Now, we can be in church, 
but not have significant relationships. And this is one of the saddest things that can ever happen to you. You could be being a part of this, uh, which is a good thing, uh, morning in and morning out, but you may not necessarily be a part of the life of the relationships of the church. That's the reason why I love what Saul did here. Despite of the potential setbacks that he might be experiencing because of his past, he still took a step of faith and attempted to join. Now, I understand that maybe for some of us, hopefully not many of us, some things might have happened to you in the past. Maybe you have just been contented in just attending, just uh, watching this every morning. But when it comes to building significant relationships in the church, joining small groups, joining um, ministry, volunteering in the ministry, that's not something that is for me. And I kind of understand why things like that happen. My prayer is that I hope that has been settled in your heart, and I hope that forgiveness has happened as well. Um, I remember a time when I was still in high school. Uh, I grew up in the countryside, in the barrio, and a certain dentist to the barrio came to our hometown. And uh, after seeing that, for those of you who are dentists, this is not a shot against you. I love dentists. I have very good friends who are dentists. But what he noticed was that my canine, which is the, I mean, if you're into it, you know that that's the pillar of your teeth, was on top of another teeth. So what he did was he said it doesn't look good, but uh, so we should remove it. So in short, he removed it, and that really caused me pain to the point that I never wanted to visit a dentist ever again. But at some point, I realized that I need a dentist. It's not something that I can't live without. I need to be able to see one until after I attempted on looking for another one. I kept on attempting to look for another dentist until, I would say this, until I found the dentist uh, who explained things to me and who had uh, very gentle hands. What I'm saying here today is, despite of the past, don't stop attempting to join the life of the church. Saul didn't. He knew that he's going to be probably facing persecution from the inside as a result of that. He had a track record of harming Christians, but through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, he attempted to join the disciples. And that's our desire for you, that you would attempt to join the discipleship that's happening in the church. Second thing is, is found in verse 27. Good thing that Barnabas did this to him. Verse 27 says, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord. Somebody was speaking on Saul's behalf. Barnabas testified to his changed life. The second thing about relationships in the church is not only would you attempt to join, but my prayer is that you get to take someone in. Take someone in. For those of you who are involved in the life of the church already, take someone in. It doesn't harm to take another person inside your small group, inside your victory group, inside this volunteer ministry, and invite them to become a part of the life of the church. Take someone in. There are many people uh, in our churches, Sunday in, Sunday out, Friday, or maybe Saturday in, Saturday out, wherein they just come in there to attend. My hope is that we would take them in to become a part of the life of the church. It doesn't take too much for us to be able to invite people in and say, um, would you like to be a part of what's happening in the smaller groups uh, in church, in the life of the church in general? We don't want people who would just attend, but we would want people who would really be involved. Last part is verse 28. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. So what happened was Saul, finally was taken in by the people because Barnabas, you know, kind of like commended him and told him about what happened to him on his way to Damascus. And as a result of that, they continued on with the mission of God. They spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ. The third point here about the relationships that we're trying to build here on church, in church, is that it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Yes, we will attempt to join. Yes, we will take people in. But in the end, this relationship is all about Jesus Christ. My most significant relationships with people are people whom I met from church. 
And this is not because we're so compatible or we're so alike. We all have the same um, interests altogether. It was more because of what Jesus has done for us. That's why we were placed together in the same relationships. I want us all to remember that it is Jesus who authored these relationships. And what happened there is that it has caused the church to have peace and multiply. That is my prayer for you today, that you would have peace and that everything we get to do is multiplied. And it happens within the context of the church. As we all lift up the name of Jesus, as we worship Him, my prayer is that us as believers, we will continue to attempt to join the life of the church and that we would continue to take in people to become a part of our groups in the life that we're all in. Let me take this time to pray for you. Lord, thank you, God. Today we exalt your name, Jesus. You are the name above every other name. There's no one like you, Lord. All relationships are based on you. The church of the, the, the growth of the church is based on you. The peace that we experience is based on your name, God. Lord, I equally pray today for those who are uh, making an attempt, Lord, or those who would be making an attempt, Lord, to join the life of the church. I pray, God, for grace to be upon them. I pray that they would be strengthened. I pray that they would not give up looking for that right group, Lord, who would take them in. I pray, God, that you would sustain them, Lord. I, I pray, Lord, for those who might have such a painful experience in the past. I speak for your healing. I speak for your grace. I speak, God, that the right avenues to be able to talk about it, to be able to talk about it, Lord, will be brought forth in their lives. And I pray also, Lord, for those who are opening their lives up, God, Lord, particularly for us, who's been in the life of the church for quite some time now. I pray, God, that we would not just be satisfied in just attending, but, Lord, we would open our lives up, open our group, open our homes, open the opportunities we have, Lord, so that others may fill in, God. And others, Lord, may join in and become a part of the life of the church. May your grace be upon all of us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing this song once again. Right before we go, let me read Acts chapter 9, verse 31 once again. And let me declare this blessing to be upon you as you are the church. You are a part of the church. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. So I speak grace and peace to be upon you. I pray that everything you do will be built up I pray that you would walk in the fear of the Lord. May comfort coming from the Holy Spirit come upon you 
and may you multiply. May others know more about Jesus because of your life. God bless you, and I'll see you again next time.